Welcome to worship. 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 No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm so glad that you came to join us here as we worship together online. Let me first say happy 4th of July, one day late. This is a great weekend for us to celebrate the gift that God has given us to live in this country. Today is Communion Sunday, and if you've never done communion with us, this is how it goes. Uh, you have a chance now to go grab some form of bread, some form of liquid, and later uh, we, I will lead you in communion, and we'll all be able to share together with the elements from our own homes. First now, let's have a prayer, and then we're going to hear a prelude from Carol Lee. Let us pray. God of creation, we invite you into our homes and our lives. Meet with us and let your presence be known among us as we worship you today. Amen. continue with our music by hearing from the choirs the song we sang a while ago called the shepherd of my life this is a song of praise thanking god for the ways that god cares for us the way that god blesses us with god's presence and love and provision so let's hear now from the choir Thank you. 
Thank you, choir. Today, I'm going to read our passage, and it is a break from our journey in Genesis. Today, we're going to hear a story and a prayer from Jesus from Matthew chapter 11. Here, Jesus is preaching. To what can I compare this generation? It is like children playing a game in the public square. They complain to their friends. We played wedding songs and you didn't dance. We played funeral songs and you didn't mourn. For John didn't spend his time eating and drinking. And you say, he's possessed by a demon. The son of man, on the other hand, feasts and drinks. And you say, he's a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and other sinners. But wisdom is shown to be right by its results. At that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. O oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This Independence Weekend, when we celebrate our Declaration of Independence from England, I've been wondering a lot lately about how it really was for those who were living during this time of revolution and beginning a new young experiment called America. We never talk about the people who were not for the revolution. And when you think about it, it makes sense. Here we have a settlement of people who are established and we've been here long enough to have a few generations. And there are people who have built their wealth upon the status quo. And there are more people who have just come from England and maybe most of their family is still over there and they feel loyal to their roots. And maybe it wasn't just people who were looking out for their own blood or their own money. I'm going to guess there were a lot of people who knew that a war would mean sending their sons out to die. So yeah, we never talk about the fact that not everyone was on board. They think anywhere from 20% to a third of Americans were against the revolution. There were a lot of citizens who were feeling loyal to their neighbors. Or they liked the idea of it, but they didn't like how all those young, um, arrogant revolutionaries were doing things like destroying property and ruining perfectly good businesses. And they were tarring and feathering people in the streets. And these weren't just tarring and feathering foreigners. It was their neighbors. It was people just like them. And when things became violent and ugly and not at all sophisticated, uh, they, they lost interest. There were a lot of different opinions. Even as we started the country, a lot of different opinions on how it should be led. Should we have a king? 
How do we govern ourselves? How do we decide who gets a voice? And I like to picture all these new young citizens of the United States who are not important, who are just sitting around in taverns and working their fields and they at breaks had opinions and fought with their neighbors about how things might be. You see, this America that we have now where we are constantly in different opinions, where there is uh, rumors and lies flying around all the time, none of it is new. It's part of our heritage almost, that we have this great experiment that God has given us and we all have different opinions and some of us over time will be proven wrong, some will be proven right. We're allowed to change our opinions over time. You know, there were people who were hesitant about the revolution, but then as they saw um, momentum and resources and power grow, then they jumped on board. And this thing that we have, this gift called America, is built on diverse people with different ways of seeing things. Some who are always pushing for change and some who are holding to traditional values. And being together is what makes us the country. Jesus in this passage was preaching to people who were facing a lot of the same things that our ancestors faced at the time of the revolution. They were a people living in a land with an oppressive foreign government. The Romans were taxing them constantly, had a tight rule over what they were allowed to do and not do. And there were different opinions among the Jewish people as to how to handle the Roman government. That fear of being overthrown, that fear of revolution is uh, part of what got Jesus killed because he had so many people following him and finding hope in him. And there were some people among the Jewish community who were in support of the Roman government, maybe because they had relatives there, maybe because they believed in tradition and not entering a war that would kill their sons. Maybe because their pockets were being lined. Their wealth was being built upon the status quo. And they weren't ready. They didn't believe enough in change to put things on the line. And so Jesus is preaching to this group of people. And they have different opinions. And he calls them out in this silly way. He says, you know... Um, nothing we do makes you happy. You're like children in the street. And I love this passage because in the Bible, if you look it up, this bit where he says you're like children calling, um, it's written like a poem, like it's a song that children might sing while doing jump rope. We were happy and you didn't care. We were sad and you didn't care. And, and it's in this lighthearted way that he said, you know what, John the Baptist was out in the wilderness living off the land and you said he was had a demon because he was not engaged enough he was too far away and now here i am living among you eating and drinking with everyone and you're calling me a drunkard saying i have loose values what do you want from us will nothing make you happy and what people were pushing back against is change they were pushing back against all these uh prophets that were coming forward and in the streets preaching that God wanted something more. And so Jesus is calling him out and says, listen, nothing's making you happy. What do you want? And then in front of them prays this prayer, God, thank you that you have, you've stopped all these people who think they're so smart from understanding this. And thank you, God, that your truth is being made available to everyone, even those that everyone else thinks is foolish, whether they be too young, whether they not be educated enough, whether they not have all the traditional values that others like. Thank you, God, that your salvation and your truth is being known to all. This prayer is a slap in the face to all of those wise people listening to Jesus. It's not it's not as difficult now to see how he enraged people to the point of calling for him to be crucified. Then Jesus moves from calling people out 
to offering them hope. This passage ends by Jesus turning to the crowd and saying, Come, you who are weary and heavy burdened. That word weary really resounds with anyone who has been struggling to make ends meet, who has been struggling with being labeled as less than. Weariness of seeing injustice generation after generation. The weariness of never measuring up. And Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is, this is a huge, it's like pouring balm onto a wound. As Jesus is looking at a crowd of weary people who have been rejected by society and who have been overlooked for generations. And Jesus isn't saying, come to me and I will take away all your problems. I will take away all this political conflict. I will fix your country. Uh, I will make you wealthy. No, he is talking about the state of our souls. Because after a while, we get so wrapped up in this life that our souls don't even know which way is right anymore. And we hold so tightly to the things and values that we hope will give us a future that we don't even know what a hopeful future looks like. And so Jesus is offering them this hope. Come to me and I will give you rest. I will help you carry this burden going forward. And that's our good news today because God isn't going to take away any of the problems of our lives, any of the conflicts of this great country. But when we hear Jesus call to look to heaven and to find ourselves walking with Jesus through these days, when we look to heaven for rejuvenation and truth and light and hope, then when it comes time to stand for something, we do so with the power of God behind us. We do so with the Holy Spirit replenishing us every time we get knocked down time and time again. When it comes time just to live peaceful lives that are growing fruits of the Spirit, when it comes time for us to show other people what love looks like, when we are walking with Jesus and bringing our burdens and our worries an injustice seen every day when we take that and lay it at the feet of heaven. It gives us strength to move forward. It gives us renewed energy to know that we walk with God. And Jesus offers this to all those sinners and drunkards, all those who were less than, not good enough in the eyes of the church. He offers it to a whole bunch of Gentiles like me. This is good news for us indeed. God is in our country. God is working amazing things. God is in our lives now. And God is calling us to look to heaven as we walk into the future so that we can be aware of the moments when we are acting like children and we can be aware of when God's calling us uh, to be a little more wise. Do you hear the call? Do you feel weary? Are you ready to lay your burdens on Christ? God, we pray that you work in our lives in new ways. We forgive you. We ask your forgiveness for those times when we think we are smarter than everyone else, when we think we have the only truth. God, forgive us for the moments of arrogance when we think we are above you. God, today we bring to you these things that burden us and we lay them at your feet and ask you to help us walk through our days. Give us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. God, I pray that you bless each of our lives as we look to you to know what is truth and where the Spirit is working. 
And we pray that you bless our country. This great big experiment. Help us to love each other well and honor each other with our decisions. Finally, God, we praise your son taught us saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to take a moment and prepare for communion uh, with Christ. This is the moment when we meet with one another and with God and with Christians around the world and know that we are all coming as equals. As we prepare, let's stop and sing together. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Let us sing, and then we will join together in communion. Welcome to communion. We light the candle to represent God's presence here in our homes. You want to blow it out? Good job. <laughs> yeah. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, and blessed it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup and passed it around saying, this cup is the new covenant made in my blood. Each time that you eat this bread and drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. God, we pray that you bless these gifts of bread and drink. As we partake of them, may we do as an act of worship toward you and as an act of unity with one another. Amen. Now we take the bread. Make it the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. Oh, 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 oh. Megan, Jesus loves you. The cup of salvation. Take and drink. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us once again for worship here online. It's my honor to lead you on behalf of First Congregational Church in Red Oak and Congregational Church in Shenandoah. We are, over the next weeks, going to slowly begin offering in-person services. Um, look to email and Facebook for guidelines on how we're going to do this. For example, face masks will be required by all who enter. Uh, and for those of you who don't feel comfortable, who are feeling sick, please don't come. Uh, and those of you who just can't wear a face mask for an hour, we understand that. And that's why I'm going to be right here online leading these services in the format you come to know uh, week after week for the foreseeable future. As we go into this week, I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you're able to continue celebrating the gift that God has given us 
in this life here in America. Uh, and as we go, hear this blessing for your week. May our God of love bless you in this moment, in this day, and into the night. May God's peace go with you into your homes, into your work, and into your heart. May God's grace cover you to love well, to live securely, and to face each day with hope. Amen.